Verse 15. The spiritual person, you, judges all things because, but he, but is himself not to be judged by no one. For who understands the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Chapter 3, verse 1. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. So he's talking about the spiritual man, and he's saying the spiritual man judges all things, and himself is not judged. Who is a spiritual man? A man who is, that is aware of his spiritual identity. Conscious, spiritually awake. In the name of Jesus, be spiritually awake. May all the senses of your spirit and the faculty of your spirit come to life. And that's when you can pursue the purpose of God and the destiny God has purposed for you. I see an awakening in your life and you discover that your provision is in the spirit. Your victory is spiritual. And they that have understood that world, pursued that realm, and I pray that the Lord will grant you spiritual understanding today. This is my prayer according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. It says, and so from the day we had, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I see that's what the Lord wants to reveal to you, that you may understand the power of him in you because you are spirit. I want to say that before we start. And uh, our week has been very, very exciting to me. Every day, every night, we are moving from glory to glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for being part of this journey. And I want to encourage you to, after the watch, maybe during the day, you listen what the Lord has told us and spoken to us and taught us during the watch. In the mighty name of Jesus. So it's been exciting. I've been looking at the voice of the altar. But I, I start by saying that life is spiritual because there are many believers who have just believed, carnal kind of believers, they have not investigated and searched the spirit world. And Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, knock, and seek. So you must move from the life of just asking to the life of seeking. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things will be added unto you. So the seeking is where we are right now, understanding spiritual truth. In one area we are investigating is the area of the altar, in particular the prayer altar. But we are approaching it in general, the altar in general. If you look at the example God gave us to learn from is how he dealt and related with Israel. You know, Israel is the example how we can know God, how God related with Israel, and that's how we can relate with him. He picked a people, he picked a nation, relates with him, that we can learn from Israel. So, 
There's an example here about altars. There's godly altars, the altars of God, and altars of darkness. And many times you find that in life, the contention is about altars. The altar in you, the altar of God, challenged by the altar of darkness. What I'm talking about, the altar, I'm not about the seat, the source of power. So in Israel, the Lord kept telling Israel how to deal with destiny and he would bring them the issue of altars. For example, you look at Moses and then Joshua and then from Joshua we come to the book of Judges. Remember in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord had told them something about when they go in the land, what they should do. And what the first instruction was in the book of Deuteronomy to deal, to, re, to remove the altars. So on the last day of the altar week, when we talk about the, the voice of the altar, we're going to be looking at how to dislodge, overcome, fight, destroy evil altars. Because you cannot exist with them. These are spiritual structures, covenantal platforms that are giving the devil and his demons access and legal right to operate on the face of the earth, to operate in the lives of the humans. So you cannot leave them. In other words, you cannot leave the devil's platform, which are evil altars. So God tells Israel that when they go into the land, they have the assignment, they had the assignment to destroy the evil altars. Now, in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 1, it says that Judges, chapter 2, verse 1, Now, the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bokim. Remember, Gilgal was the place of circumcision. And he said, I brought you up from Egypt, and I brought you into the land that I swore to give to your fathers. And I said, I'll never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars. But you've not obeyed my voice. What is this you've done? So now I say, I'll not drive them out before you, but they shall become thorns in your side, and their gods shall be a snare. Look at that. God comes and says, look, because you've not done my assignment to destroy, to break down their altars, you've not broken down their altars. Now, those altars, the people and their gods, the altars shall be thorns in your life and their gods a snare unto you. You don't want to know what Israel went through in the book of Judges. Sometimes for eight years, then 18 years, then 20 years in captivity because they did not remove those evil altars. So the, the altars and the people remained a thorn in Israel and the gods of those altars became a snare, became a trap. Many souls and destinies were destroyed, thousands in the land of Canaan because they Altars of the evil one remain standing. That's what God told Gideon in chapter 6 of Judges. And later, when he encountered Gideon, and he told him, return to your father's house and break down the altar of Baal and the Ashley that is there. Then build a proper altar for me. He tells him that. And I want to look at, you know, on Sunday I've been looking at an aspect of the altar, which is the cross, the blood, and the altar. The cross of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ and the altar. What is the voice of the cross? What is the cross testifying even now as our altar? What is the testimony of the cross? And what is the voice of the blood, the blood of Yeshua on the altar? The testimony, the witness, I call it the testimony of grace on the altar. So God tells Israel 
to destroy the altar. To go and destroy them. And someone one day said, but Pastor James, maybe that is the Old Testament. Did Jesus deal with the altars? Did Jesus really deal with them? Or oh, we are on our own? Did really Jesus go and deal with those altars? Or did he, are we trying to go back to the law? Because we don't see Jesus dealing with the altars. But there's something I want to show you in scripture. Maybe this will open your eyes to a certain truth about break down those altars. If you open your Bible with me, in the book of in the book of Matthew open your bible the, the book of Matthew chapter chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13 now Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philip now where Jesus came that region if you're a Bible student and you've been reading your Bible very well and studying, that place is called the gate of hell. But that's a place where Jeroboam raised the altar that became a sin in Israel. That's where he raised the altar. You know, in the book of Kings, when God said a prophet, to cry against the altar in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13. In 1 Kings chapter 12, Jeroboam raises an altar. If you read from verse 25. You see, he made two golden calves and he said, I'm, lo I'm looking at verse, uh, verse 28. So, and it's verse 29 First uh, Kings chapter 12, verse 29, he set one in Bethel and the other he put in Daniel. Then the, this thing became a sin for the people went as far as done to be before one. What is the thing? He built an altar contrary to the will of God. I'm going to say something. And this became a sin in the bloodline. If you look at verse 33, he went up to the altar that had made in Bethel and he offered sacrifices. So in chapter 13, God sends a man of God, a man of God from Judah, and went by the altar. He went and met Jeroboam at the altar and cried against the altar. Some say cried against the altar. The man of God who came all the way from Judah to cry against the altar because the altar was a prison, had become a snare, had become a prison, had become a thorn. So Jeroboam is on the altar and a man cried against the altar, the man of God, and said, by the altar, altar, that says the Lord, behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice to you the priests of the high places who make offering on you and the human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down. The altar shall be torn down and the, earth, the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And when the king heard this saying, the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar at Bethel, Jehoabam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him. And his hand, which he stretched out against him, dried up so that he could not draw it back to himself. Have you seen the contention of the altar? Jeroboam raises the altar to Baal, which now is using to rule the nation. Ten tribes of Israel. And God sends a man of God, like he has sent me tonight, to cry against the altar. That was a bondage in Israel. And that is what I'm doing right now, this week. To raise a cry 
against the altar. And say, altar, altar, war unto you, evil altar. You war unto you, evil altar of barrenness. War unto you, evil altar of poverty. War unto you, evil altar of sorcery in the land. The altar demanding blood in our, of our children. War unto you. So this is, in that, this is where uh, th this man raised the altar. And for generations, even when God sent this prophet, and you know, uh, you know what happened to this prophet? You know the story. This prophet who cried against the altar. The altar killed him. Because the prophet, the old prophet in the land, who had subscribed to such altars, deceived him. And the man disobeyed God. And he died. A lion devoured him. A man of God. Because God had told him, do not even eat in the land. Live quickly, immediately. Because you have cried against the altar. Live immediately. You are a prophet of God. And tonight's session is more of not a teaching, but I'm crying against the altars in the air, the altars in the waters, the altars that are, they are searching for under the sea. I cry against the evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. I cry against the evil altar that people are going to want to worship under the sea. We cry against those altars. The altars in the mountains, the altars in the rivers, the evil altars in the bloodline, the altars that are against marriages, the altars that are blocking the kingdom, the purpose of the word of God, that are blocking and taking people away from the churches, from the work of God, the altars that were raised to turn away the minds of people from God, the altars that the leaders are subscribing to, to give permission to demons and evil spirits and unclean spirits to operate in the nation because of their altars. The Lord shall smite them tonight. So in the book of Matthew chapter 16, Jesus goes to the same place where this altar was in Caesar Philip. So he entered there from verse 13 and challenges the altar by saying, who do people say that the son of man is. Okay. And he's now addressed the altar. And they said some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others Jeremiah. And one of the prophets is said to them. But, who, but he said to them. Verse 15. But who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied. You are the Christ the son of the living God. You are the Christ the anointed. The son of the living God. And Jesus said blessed are you Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are a peer, and on this rock, I will build my church. Now rock there, and on this rock, I will build my church. On that stone, there was a huge rock. Not a stone, Peter is Petrus, the stone. But this was a, pet, a, a huge rock which was used to worship. Devil, devils. It was an altar for generations. And Jesus travels all the way to come to Caesar Philip to address the altar and say, on this rock I shall build my ecclesia. My ecclesia. The word church here means ecclesia. My government. My leadership. It's the, it's the church, the ecclesia that can challenge the altars. Because the church is the altar, the ecclesia, the ruling council, the church is, the, is an altar. Denominations are altars. When you say this denomination, this denomination, now a group of people, masses, have believed in a system and have vowed and covenanted. That's where every place you go, the church, if you find a, a church building on a hill, it's a place of contention because it's the altar. The church, the ecclesia is the altar. Ecclesia means the ruling council. So the church, the body of Christ is the altar of the New Testament. And, when, and I'm looking at many of you that the enemy has deceived. You don't belong to any congregation. You're saying me, I pray alone. You know, I don't have a church. Listen, if you're going to deal with Tateries, you need to belong 
to a congregation. You need to belong to a system. The church of Jesus Christ. The ecclesia. Amen. You submit to yourself to the ordained authority. So it says, Peter, I'll build my ecclesia and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Oh my God. Whatsoever you bind, because now you understood the authority of the altar, is to bind and to lose. The authority of the altar is to bind and to lose. But how do you bind and how do you lose? Today, as I share this, the prayers are going to pray. I'm going to write them down and I want you to repeat them as a family, as a church, as a company, as an individual. Because the prayer I'm going to release today are just little, maybe just a few sentences. But I'm telling you, you utter them in the realm of the spirit and the angels of the Lord shall execute them. And somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Welcome. The Lord bless you so much. And thank you for joining in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for being part of this journey. Today, as I teach, I cry against any ungodly altar in your neighborhood. I cry against any ungodly altar in your neighborhood. I remember some time ago, I went to a place called Kayunga, some years ago, many years ago, with a man of God, a bishop, who were conducting an assembly, like a seminar. And I was teaching, I was also leading prayer. We didn't bind, we didn't fight, say fight. But the prayers I'm going to share with you are the prayers I was teaching the leaders to, to, to apply. So after the seminar, everyone went to, they were coming back the next day. And when they returned the next day, they reported, that, this was the report. In the district, in the neighborhood, eight shrines that night caught fire by themselves. Eight shrines. This was documented. Eight, the pastors in Kayunga, you remember that? Eight shrines in different locations. Not in the same place. Different places all over the area. Far from each other. In the night, they caught fire by themselves. Because they were altars. All I had to do is to, add, to let the church, the body of Christ in that region, agree with the prayers I'm going to share with you. And when they pray this prayer, they didn't have to go there physically. You don't have to go there. You don't have to enter shrines. You don't want to have to go to the islands or to the waters. You can be in your house because the spirit realm is not limited by distance. And as you agree with these prayers, I'm telling you, your house, your nation, your family, your bloodline shall be freed. I see your siblings, your, your, your aunties and uncles getting saved and healed. I see your marriage restored. I see your ministry growing. I see your influence increasing. I see your eyes open. I see your ears open. I see your spiritual dreams restored. Because we are removing the barrier. The evil altar has been the barrier in your life. That people I talk to, you feel so lazy to pray. You don't know what happened. There's a heaviness. Like a yoke on your life. Is there someone saying, Pastor James, you're talking about me? It's me. And you've been feeling like there's a shadow. There's a cloud over your life. But as I speak, as we pray this prayer, it will be torn. The evil covering will be destroyed. The barriers will be taken away. The obstacles will be destroyed. And you begin to soar in the realm of the spirit. And your eyes shall be opened. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh my God, I see the power of God present right now. I see your prophetic gift coming. I see a vision of a lamp 
I see a lamp in my sight right now. And it has been, they, they, it's been cleaned and trimmed. And it's giving out more light. And now they're becoming like three more lights, lamps. And the lamp is the church. It's coming to life right now. But the lamp of the Lord in your life is giving light one more time. You are the light of the world because you are an altar of God. Let the light of the Lord begin to shine in you. I see what God is doing is now rekindling. Bring again the light, the light from the altar. And as you begin to worship, many shall be healed. Many shall be set free. Let there be light in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be light in your spirit right now. Shine. Shine, I tell you right now. Shine, Karen. Shine, Joshua. Shine in the name of Jesus. Shine today. Let the glory of the Lord shine upon you. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord marching around about you. And the more they march, the more the light shines. There's a bright light in your spirit right now and over your life. The miracle working light of God. Jesus, the light of the world, is shining on your altar. I see flashes of light, disarming principalities. I see bolts of light pulling down strongmen. Oh my God, your enemy that has been pursuing you has just been blinded by the light that's coming out of your eyes and out of your prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see your entire house where you are right now. The light of the Lord is shining there because the altar of the Lord, the altar is giving out light. Kabradi ji katabrasaya. The altar of God is giving out light. So bright. I see demons screaming. Snakes dying. Witches cannot look at you. The light from you shall blind them. Tonight, the light in you is judging the evil altars. The light in you is judging wickedness. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to tell you, friends, tonight. Do not stop this light. Remove the filthiness, the sin, the greed, the bitterness. Be pure before the Lord and your light shall shine. I see God has given you a clean garment without filthiness. Rich robes coming upon you right now. Be dressed in white garments without sin, without greed, without bitterness, without witchcraft, without murders, without hatred, but the fear of God. Put on the fear of God. Be dressed right now. Now before I pray this prayer, I'm praying that the, the Lord will enable you to put on Christ. Say, I put on Christ. I put on the light of God. I put on salvation. I put on righteousness. I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the shield of faith. I put on the readiness of the gospel of peace. I put on the belt of truth. I put on the, 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 the shield of faith. Be dressed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be, re- be dressed in righteous garments and rich robes. Put on purity. Put on purity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, put on Christ. Because I know you, you are putting off the old. You are putting off fear. You are putting off unbelief. But now put, by faith, be dressed in Christ Jesus and let the light shine. Come on, you are shining. And as you shine, there's an attraction. You are attracting good. But you are repelling bad. Evil shall be flee from you. Shall be far from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said evil shall be far from you. Someone say in the name of Jesus. I am the light of the world. I am the light in Christ Jesus. The light of Christ shines upon me. And in me and through me. And evil shall be far from my tent. But good shall locate me. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Good shall locate you tonight. I see good locating you. I see things you never dreamed that are coming from God, locating you. Angels are locating you. Divine partners, your mate is locating you. You are favored. The yoke is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus because you are putting on the garment. You are dressed in white robes. You are dressed in righteousness. Hallelujah, somebody. 
I see this light. Oh my God, the glory of the Lord is here. I see the light of the Lord. I see miraculous healing. I see the spirit of the Lord coming upon you mightily in prayer, in worship. You're charged right now. You're charged in prayer. You're charged in worship. Come on, bless the Lord for the great work he's doing in your life right now. My Father, thank you. Thank you for the miracle working light that is shining. You know, what I'm sensing is like the light I saw the day I got born again. The pillar of light I saw in that young lady that disarmed me. In the same light that I'm seeing, I'm sensing in this meeting right now. Right now, a pillar of light on your life. It's like an open port in the realm of the spirit. It's like the heaven has opened on your life and there is this light like a waterfall coming through your system. And I'm looking at a young uh, a lady, a woman of God. You are standing where there is a light on your head. I see young men. You are standing where there is a light. And from that light, you're going to go through the nations and spearhead revivals. Signs, miracles, and wonders. The prophetic is going to be so clear in your life. Oh my God. I see you are ordained in the light. It's like an ordination night. Young man, my God. Rabbi. Nathan. It's your night right now. There's a young man I'm praying for right now, my spiritual son, Nathan. I'm seeing you now, and there's a light on your head. It's like a pillar of light connecting the heaven. Oh, Zakata, Brady, Boshiri. I see most other people. You're walking through cities, but it's like light walking. It's moving. It's moving. Oh, my God. Somebody, do you see what's happening right now? The anointing of the Lord is being poured upon you through a pillar of light. And on your life, angels are ascending and descending. Oh, my God. Continue in worship because God is doing a mighty work right now. Just wherever you are, just raise your voice in prayer and raise your hands because they, this is what we wear it for. This is what we've been preparing for since the year began. The heaven to be open. And I see now the cloud are torn. The evil covering is torn. And now this light is coming down. It's shining on your life. And everywhere you go right now, a great move of God is beginning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Your eyes are giving out light. Your heart is rejoicing in the light. The glory of the Lord is shining upon you mightily because the altar in you is giving out much light. Oh my God. The altar in you is giving out much light. What's the altar? The name of Christ is like a light in your life. Inside you, the name Jesus, Jesus Christ, oh my God, that name is shining inside of you. In your house, the altar is giving out light. And they're seeing that altar from afar, shining brighter and brighter and hotter in the mighty name of Jesus. And there is also, as you stand right now, my sons and my daughters, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you, Rose. I pray that the Lord will baptize you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you right now that the glory of the Lord shall shine upon you. That the arm, the hand of the Lord shall be upon you. May you be given unlimited access to the things of God and uncommon wisdom. Come your way right now. Oh, Zatabradea, dear. Zakatabradeku, Shikatabradea. Ribreka sadabaka de karia. Cabra de bobo shika tabra de kaziara. Sita brada katebrikeana. Makota brada kazakata. Zeleke tebrike ne makasa kata bradia. Zarabakota brade bo shikata mayandi. Zakata brade ketea. Zika tamra de kandia botea rabatea. Rika tabra de rianda kata bradia. Zara de bo rikeria. Rikorobo shikata bradia. La botan de kata bradia. Bride kete brada kataya, zende kete brike ni makota brada bakataya, kibra kata brada ibo shata brada ibi, rikere baba 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 brada ibi, kabrada kaza tabrada dia, 
Jika tabra de de yandara kasika tabra. Jika tabra de buria. Rika na makasada baraka dike de bojia tayazea. Zatabra de kete brika na makadakadea. Kabra da kade bojika tabra de kedea. Kabra kada baba kazika tabra de ikasia. Matabra dea de kasiria. Brike de baba da kate brika tabra katara. Zaramako tabra de bojika ta. Sheka tabra de kate karia. Kabra kata Brade ikasia, rize kete brakata, riko robo shikata, rika zakata brade bo shikata ya nikaria, kebra da baba ko shatada, matara baba ko shikata ya, rike de baba ka sandara ka zeya, brade bo shikata brade baba dia, rinde de mama ko shikata, mara de bobo shikata bra, rika zeka tabra de bobo shikata ya, my God and my Father, mighty in power, the Lord our God will bless you. Kabra de bo shikataya. Zika tamari gere bo shikataya. Braka tabra de bo shikataya. Masara baba ko shikere yara. Brateri yara baba ko shita. Matari yere bo shitaya. Makatara baba ko taya. Be, be charged in prayer right now. Because the light, there's a light now. Come on, we don't, I don't want to miss this moment. And I want everybody to be sensitive. Because I see this opening on your life. I see this light shining on you. I see the lamp of the Lord in your hands. The Lord is giving you that lamp to go into the nations, to go into your community, to shine his light, to shine his wisdom, to shine his, glo his glory, to shine. May you carry it right now. This is not just a, a meeting. This is an invitation, an ordination ordained in the light. Ordained in the light of the glory of God. Because like Peter, something was revealed to him. And that's what the light was shining in him. In the same, the spirit of revelation. There's a light shining in your heart. A light shining in your, in your heart. In your spirit. And now you're seeing. You're gaining a, an authority. You're gaining a place, a position in the spirit. Come on. Are gaining a place in the spirit. A place among. The Bible talks about the armor of light. Shikata. Brikeri bobo shikata. It's talking about the armor of light. And I, that's what I'm releasing. I'm seeing right now. Like a garment. In the book of Romans talks about that. Romans chapter 13. Oh my God. A prophetic word is here. Oh hallelujah. Besides this you know. Verse 11. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. Besides this you know. The time. That the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. The hour has come for you, my son. The hour has come for you, woman of God. Someone say, I wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer. This is Romans 13, 11. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Hey, Zale, Zikata, brother, but Zikata. So, than when we first believe. And verse 12 says, this is your word, my daughter. This is your word, my brother, my sister. The night is far gone. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness. Someone say, I cast off. I cast off. The works of darkness. I cast off. Someone, that's your confession, my brother. The works of darkness. What are the works of darkness? Unbelief. What are the works of darkness? The works of the flesh. Impurity. And I want to say, I cast off right now. Any works of darkness that I've ever walked in, I cast it out right now. I cast it off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cast off lies, rumors, pride, Anger, rebellion, rejection, unforgiveness, bitterness. I cast off the I cast off the works of darkness. Cast off the works of darkness. Someone say one more time. I cast off the works of darkness. And it says, put on, hallelujah, the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. And the acts of darkness are in verse 13. Ogis, drunkenness, sexual immorality. Sensuality, quarreling, jealousy. But put on, here it's put on the armor of light. And number two, verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Someone say, I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. Someone say, I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I put on the armor of light. I put off the works of darkness. I put off the works of darkness. And as you are dressed now, you are marching, you are watching, you are now standing against the altars of darkness, the works of darkness, and the fire from you is melting them. The light in you is consuming the works of darkness, the altars of darkness, the agents of darkness, the human agents of darkness, and the spiritual agents of darkness are all disarmed. They are all exposed. They are all falling down from your house, from your life. Cast them off in the mighty name of Jesus. The altars have been there of darkness. But I'm telling something. You are now positioned yourself in the light. And the light from you shall cast out the altar. The light in you, the purity in you. Oh my God. The position of obedience in you shall cast out these altars. The agents shall break the horns. Shall break those horns. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall destroy the priesthood. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh my God. If you look at. So that's the war against evil altars. The war against evil altars is fought how? In your position. You take your position in the light. Then you can declare this prayer. The Lord said in Deuteronomy. If you can see that slide. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess served their gods. Deuteronomy chapter 2. That is our slide on the screen. On the, on the high mountains. Okay. And you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, burn their wooden images with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names from, from that place. It's on your screen. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2. Destroy, and destroy their names from that place. What destroy their names is what? Is the name of Jesus Christ in you which is the light. So what the thing you're going to do is God is going to destroy the horns. Psalms 75 10 says, But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off. All the horns of the wicked, I will also cut off. Now, when you stand in righteousness, that's the light of the Lord. What happens? The Lord shall cut off the horns. And you can pray now this prayer. You're praying it in the light. And say, O carpenter of God, O carpenter of God, break the horns of darkness to unrepairable pieces in the name of Jesus. O carpenter of God, break the horns of darkness to irreparable pieces in the name of Jesus. And every power causing stagnancy in my life be disgraced forever in the name of Jesus. Every power. Now you, are, you see the kind of thought you're praying from? Okay. Every power. Every power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power causing stagnancy. In my life, be disgraced forever. In Jesus' name, pray ten times. In the mighty name of Jesus, evil counsel against my breakthrough turn into foolishness. In the name of Jesus, evil counsel against my breakthroughs turn into foolishness. In the name of Jesus, and every hunter looking for my destiny be blinded. In the name of Jesus, every hunter looking for my destiny. Be blinded in the name of Jesus Christ. And now nullify the sacrifices. Nullify the sacrifice. Ask God to reject all petitions and sacrifices of evil altars in your territory and your bloodline. Like what Elijah did and the Baal prophets. We remember the Abel and Cain incidences. So this is the prayer. You are activating the sacrifice of Calvary. I acknowledge, I will pray this, I acknowledge 
that there can be no greater and more potent sacrifice than the blood of Jesus Christ. And now you chide the blood of Jesus Christ against the evil sacrifices. This is your prayer. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against any evil sacrifice offered on evil altars around my territory and my bloodline. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against any evil sacrifice offered on evil altars around my territory and in my bloodline. And petition God to nullify evil covenants. And say, I cause the voice of the blood of Jesus to speak a better covenant. I cause the voice of the blood of Jesus to speak a better covenant. And now, because you are in the light and it's a new priesthood, you are going to retrench the evil priesthood. Declare, declare now that you are a holy priesthood, a chosen nation, a people belong to God, according to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. And ask God to wipe out every form of evil priesthood in the bloodline and in your territory. Ask and say, Lord, I ask you, wipe out every evil priesthood in my bloodline in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And pray this prayer. Evict evil priests from their offices and positions and cancel all their decrees and petitions. Evict them. Blind and paralyze every tool and skill they use in their duty. Hallelujah. Someone say, I evict evil priests from their offices and positions. And I cancel all their decrees and petitions. Blind, I blind and paralyze every tool and skill they use in their duties. In the mighty, glorious name of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is done. And the sons of God and the priests of the Lord, wherever you are, say amen. Because it's done. I see you are in the light. I know, I'm one of, I know many of you, the way you're going to pray tonight, you've never prayed. You are charged to pray. There's an awakening in you. You are charged to call on the name of the Lord mightily. My God, the anointing of God upon you, the light of the Lord, the, the amount of revelations, the multitude of visions and dreams, the prophetic words, the prophetic giftings, the authority, the keys. Oh my God, the Lord is building his church. And I speak in the name of Jesus into your bloodline, into your father's house, in your family tree. Even those that have not known the Lord, I call them out of bondage. I call your siblings from the evil altars. I call your parents. I call them forth from the grave. I release your father's children from the farriers, from, from bloodshed, from wickedness, from witchcraft. I release your sister and I speak my little success. Oh my God, woman of God, I pray for you to be the pathfinder of your father's house. Your father's house will not be scattered, but you shall rebuild it. And you shall raise the oath of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the build as anointing. Receive the anointing to build. I don't know who I'm talking to. Receive the anointing to build. Build churches, build nations, build families. Your husband shall call you a builder because you come in his life to build. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The altar of the Lord is speaking in your life. Because right now the light of the Lord is coming upon you. Oh my God. May the wealth of nations locate you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the anointing. Because of the favor. Because of the victory. And the righteousness. And the light of the Lord shining in you. Oh my God. God is moving mightily. Oh Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Let your light shine. Oh my katabra de gezia. Shikatabra dabasia. We thank the Lord. Oh my God. What, is a, what a great night. Even as I stop right now. I feel the fire is burning in you. There's a burning of the fire of God. The light of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Oh my God. Tell us what is happening to you. We want to hear from you. 
What has happened to your house? Especially your prayer altar. Because God is mightily moving in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I bless your holiness. And I worship you for the invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Over the days, Thank you.